If you're facing oppression, if your means are non-violent and your goals are noble, if you wish to oppose oppression and bring out freedom, then this is the story for you. We want to teach you how to use the power and force of an oppressor and make it your own strength. It is a skill, sort of like jujitsu. How do we know that? Well, let's just say we have experience. Our journey was long and full of suffering. We overcame the forces of oppression and won. Oppression is very persistent. It can last for years, decades or even longer. It is there, whether you like it or not. The only way out is to do something about it. It is a hard and perilous journey. It will help your movement. It will raise awareness and achieve your ultimate goal, overcoming oppression and gaining freedom. So, what is the nature of oppression and how does it work? Oppression is an effective tool in the hands of the authorities. It's violent, brutal and scary. When used, it achieves immediate results. It punishes disobedience and also prevents future disobedience by sending a message to potential troublemakers. Last but not least, it creates fear. Fear is one of the most effective forms of control. It's as simple as that. If you're afraid, you obey. Take, for example, Burma. The country has been groaning under a military dictatorship since 1962. When elections were held in 1990, the pro-democracy figure Aung San Suu Kyi won big, but the regime annulled the results and cracked down hard on democracy. They put everyone back into a political refrigerator and nothing much happened for nearly two more decades. That is what fear and oppression can do to people. You can't blame anyone for feeling afraid and intimidated, but when it comes down to it, whether or not you obey is always your choice. You have to stop being scared. You have to overcome the fear. And if you want to stop complying with the regime, you either learn to face your fear or you spend the rest of your life on your knees. So, how can you achieve this? What is the scariest thing you can imagine? Yes, the great unknown. That's why we were, as kids, afraid of the dark. And that's why we shiver when we walk into the oncologist's office for the first time. But, as we learned in Serbia in the 1990s, the best way to overcome the fear of the unknown is with knowledge. During Milosevic's regime, one of the most effective tools the police had against Otpor was the threat of arrest. Not the arrest itself, but the threat of it. The threat was much more effective because we didn't know what jails were like. We imagined prisons to be the worst kind of hell. But soon enough, a lot of us actually were arrested. When we were released, we told the others all about our experiences. We left out none of the details. The whole thing followed the same predictable pattern. We started to know what to expect. Being in prison was still scary, but not so much anymore. So, take it from us. All the knowledge that you gain and share will serve to upgrade your movement. It is much less intimidating and much less effective once you know exactly what it is like to experience it. Training your activists is one of the wisest investments you can make. Well-trained, non-violent troops will be confident and effective during actions and they will know precisely what to do in every situation. Once you have all the relevant knowledge about the oppression you face and once your troops are ready, it is time to develop a strategy to deal with it directly. You should prepare a plan of action that can be used immediately once oppression occurs. Prepare for legal action against the oppressors. Prepare to support your imprisoned members by any means possible. When you face human rights violations, prepare to immediately alert international organizations that are able to spread the news worldwide and exert pressure on the government. Prepare well, because when the oppression occurs, speed is your best protection. Now you're ready. You're prepared for the worst. Once oppression occurs, activate your plan immediately. First of all, media. 
Once oppression occurs, your goal is for the whole world to know about it. So be ready to record everything you can. Make your little video viral and make it public knowledge. This is the single most important action you can take in the face of oppression. Public perception is powerful. For many regimes, image is everything, and they will do all they can to promote an image of calm and respect. They will do anything to hide repressive actions. It's your job to disrupt this image and expose the true face of the regime. When facing oppression, two things are guaranteed. You cannot control what your opposition will do, and there will be casualties. There will be unplanned arrests, injuries, and disappearances. But there are things you can do. Support your injured and jailed activists as well as their families and leave no man behind. When movements are oppressed and chaos breaks out, some people get hurt and will need medical attention. Some will be arrested and some may go missing. So you have to ensure that everyone is accounted for. Each and every person is important. You want your people to know that they won't be left abandoned. Those who aren't accounted for as safe need to be found. Call and go to hospitals and police stations until everyone is accounted for and then record it. Record the injuries, arrests, and missing persons profiles for a press release. Oppression will very often end up creating martyrs. Use your fallen, tortured, or imprisoned comrades to bring media attention to your cause and to shame your oppressor. It will make all the torture and suffering worthwhile. It will make your efforts last long into the future. It will make the oppression backfire. Consider the case of Khalid Said in Egypt, an ordinary young man from Alexandria. Said was killed in 2010 by the police for no apparent reason. A few hours later, his family was called to the morgue. They were shocked. They could barely recognize their son and brother's body. The police had beaten him so badly that his swollen corpse was full of black and blue bruises and raised red welt. Horrified, Khalid's brother snuck a photograph of the body with his cell phone. Later, the family decided to upload the photo to the internet in order to draw attention to the case. It kick-started the We Are All Khalid Said campaign, and soon hundreds of thousands of people saw it and took part in it. The worldwide outrage stirred up by Khalid's death was one of the sparks that helped launch the Egyptian revolution. Because the police decided to murder him for no reason, Khalid Said went from being an anonymous kid in Alexandria to a national icon and a trigger for regional upheaval. So, now you know all the basics of how to make oppression backfire. The rest of it you can learn along the way. You should never lose your strength and determination. You should make it clear that no amount of oppression will cause your movement to give up. And remember, there will be casualties, as freedom is not free. It's a hard and perilous journey, but it is a journey worth taking.